Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Linguistics. Today's session will be about correcting morphology exam of 2020, and this is the exam of Professor Shabani, who teaches in Muhammad First University, semester six. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see, the first exercise has to do with analyzing a language. This is a kind of morphological analysis. That's why I focus a lot on morphological analysis because um, there is it is always um, included in um, exams, semester six exams, because it is um, you know a vital part within morphology. So the the first exercise, the Swedish language consists of a noun morpheme that one can easily analyze. Consider these Swedish noun forms. So as you can see, we have here a list of Swedish um, Swedish nouns. And we have singular, um, plural nouns, definite, independent nouns, etc. And so we have to figure out the different morphemes that correspond to definite articles, indefinite articles, um, singular, plural in the Swedish language. So the first question says, what is Swedish word for indefinite article? Um, there is A or AN that corresponds, which is in English. So the first question has to do with figuring out what is the morpheme that characterizes indefinite articles in Swedish language. So what we should do is go to the list and uh, look for all indefinite articles and see what is common among these, um, these words in Swedish. So as you can see, we have a lump, a chair, a newspaper, um, a car, a sofa, a cat. So these are all um, indefinite, indefinite art, these nouns, which um, these nouns, and we have indefinite articles there before these um, these nouns. So these nouns are indefinite. So now we have to see what is common among these nouns. So as you can see, all these nouns in Swedish have uh, this en morpheme before the noun. We have en, 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 en. So the answer to the first question to what is the morpheme that characterizes indefinite articles in Swedish language would be this en. So the answer to the first question is this, en. Uh, the second, now let's move to the second question. So what are the two forms of the plural morpheme in this data? How can you tell which plural form applies? So now we have to figure out what is or what are the different morphemes that characterize plural nouns in Swedish, lang Swedish language. So we are going to do the same thing. We are going to go look for um, you know, plural nouns in this list and see what is common among these uh, these nouns, these Swedish nouns. So as the question says, we have to look for two different morphemes that characterize plural nouns in Swedish. So the first one, we have to look for the first one. So we have lumps, we have chairs, we have newspapers, uh, we have cars, sofas, cats. So these are all plural nouns. And we have to figure out what is common among these nouns. So as you can see, we have AR, AR, OR, AR, OR, AR. So these are, we have AR and OR. So these are two different morphemes that characterize uh, plural nouns. But because these, uh, for example, this sofa, uh, ends in a vowel, so we added, we, we, we removed this vowel and replaced that with, with OR. Uh, the same goes for Lampur. Uh, sorry? Yes, Lampur Lampa. So we replace this vowel A, a uh, with OR. And when the, the noun ends with a consonant, we just add this AR. So this uh, so this word and ends in a, in a consonant, and so we added this AR when making this plural. Um, solar the same, it ends um, with a consonant L and so we added AR in order to make it plural. But for those words who end in A or vowel in general, we do not, we add, we remove that vowel and then replace that with OR. So the different 
morphemes that ca characterize um, Swedish, that characterize plural nouns in Swedish will be OR and AR. So we have AR and OR. So we apply OR, let's say, let's write that, we apply OR. We said when the noun when the noun ends with a vowel and we apply AR when the noun ends with a consonant consonant. So this is the answer to the second question. The third question says, what are the two more forms of the form of the morpheme that make a singular word definite? That is correspond to the English article the. How can you tell which one, which form applies? So for different articles, we have to figure out uh, what are the two different forms that characterize different articles in um, in Swedish. So as we did with uh, plural in Swedish, we concluded that there are two forms which characterize uh, plurals in Swedish. And so um, it is the same for different articles. So we have to figure out, we have to look for the different articles and see what is common among these different articles. So we have the lump, the first example, the lump, the chair, the newspaper, uh, we have the car, the sofa, the cat. So we haven't looked at these examples because we have the different article and we have the plural. And so we have to look just for the different article. So as I said, we have the lump, the chair, the newspaper, the car, the sofa, and the cat. So what is come among these uh, different articles? So as you can see, the end, we have an, en, 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 an, en. So we have two different forms. But for words that end with a consonant, for example, the car, which is on bill, we just add en at the end of the word, en. But for words that end with a vowel, we add, we just add n, not en. So the two, the, the, the two different forms uh, that characterize different articles in Swedish uh, language are en, and n. And because the question, we have a compound question here, so we have what are the two forms that, of the morpheme that make a singular word definite? And then we have to figure out which one applies. So we, we, end, we, we concluded that the two forms are en and n, and we said that we apply en when the noun ends with a consonant and we apply and we apply n when the noun Ends, ends with a vowel. So these are the, uh, these are the, the answers to the to the third question. I'm going to highlight these answers for you to see clearly. Yes. So now the fourth question. The four, The fourth question says. What is a morpheme that makes a plural word definite? So different articles would differ. So if we take if we take the list of the Swedish nouns here, so we have different articles, singular definite articles, and then we have plural definite articles. So we have different articles that characterize singular nouns in Swedish, and then we have singular, uh, we have different articles that characterize plural nouns in Swedish. 
and the, the, the morpheme that's co that characterizes uh, definite plural definite articles in Swedish is totally different from that, that from that that characterizes uh, singular um, definite articles in Swedish. So now we have to do the same thing. We have to go to the list and look for the words that are plural and have the different article in them and see what is common among these words. So we we already said that the OR and AR characterize plurals in, 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 in Swedish. And so here we have AR, OR, AR, OR, AR, AR. And so the only morpheme that is left here is this NA. And so it must characterize definite articles, of course, for plural nouns in, in, in Swedish. And so the answer to the fourth question is NA. So this is the morpheme that characterizes plural definite articles, um, definite articles in, in Swedish. The, the next question says, in what order do the various suffixes occur when there is more than one? one more than one. So we have to, to see now the order in which these different morphemes occur, the definite article or indefinite article, and then the plural article. So if we take the, the last examples, it's because we have both plural nouns and then we have um, the definite article, the lumps the chairs, newspapers, etc. As you can see here, we have applied OR, AR, OR, AR, which characterize plurals in Swedish. And then we added this NA morpheme that characterizes um, different articles. And so the, the order must be plural plus uh, definite articles. So the answer to, to the question in what order do the various suffixes occur when there is more than one is we have the root first we have the root plus so this is the order in which these different morphemes occur in um, Swedish, Swedish language uh, the, the next question is if Anflika is a girl, so what are the, the form for girls and the girl and the girls in, um, in Swedish? So suppose this is a girl. So we have not figured out what is the equivalent of these words in, um, in Swedish. So girls. So we already answered the question this question, what are the two forms of the plural morphemes in this data? So we said that it is AR and OR. And so to make this word plural, so we have for girls, girls it would be FLIKA. And because it ends in a vowel, we just add OR. This is what we said here. So in the first question we said we apply OR when the noun ends with a vowel. And because flika ends with a vowel, we added this OR in order to make it plural. This is as far as girl is, is concerned. So now we have to um, write the girl in, in Swedish. So what is the, the, the morpheme that characterizes uh, different articles in in Swedish, singular definite articles. So the, here is the question, what are the two forms of the morpheme that make a singular word definite? And we said that there, there are two forms, en and n. And we, we also said that we apply en when the noun ends with a consonant and n when the noun ends with a vowel. And since, so we have the girl, So since the girl ends with a vowel, we just add N. Flika, it will, uh, it will, it will be flika. The third one is girls. It's just um, plural. So we have girls.
the girls, sorry. It would be the girls, the girls. So we have Flika. So as I said, the order in which these um, different morphemes occur is with plural plus definite article um, of plural nouns in Swedish. And so we have to add OR, which is, which is now a plural Swedish noun. And then we have this NA morpheme that stands for, that characterizes uh, plural, plural definite articles in Swedish. So this is as far as the, 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 first, the first question. The second one here, uh, there is a different word here, Bosarna, which means the buses. So the question is, what are the forms for buses and the bus? So for, for buses, which means buses, buses, it is a plural noun. And so we already said in order to uh, make plural nouns in, um, in Swedish, we have two forms, OR and AR. So we go back, go back, we go back to them again. So what are the, the, the two forms of the plural morpheme in this data? How can you tell which plural form applies? So as I said, we have AR and OR. We apply OR when the noun ends with a vowel. And we apply AR when the noun ends with a consonant. So buses would be Bosar. Because it ends in a consonant, we just add AR, not, not OR. And for the other word, the bus, we said in order to, here is the question. Now we have to look for the, the, the morpheme that characterizes definite articles. Definite articles which are uh, definite articles which are which um, describe singular nouns, not plural nouns. So, what are the two forms of the morpheme that make a singular word definite? So, because this pass is definite, uh, it is singular. So, we have to apply either this n or en, and because it ends with a consonant, we are going to apply en, not n, which would be like this: bus. Sorry, uh, buses. The bus. It would be bus because it ends with a. It ends with a consonant, not a vowel. So these are the answers to the to the last question. So that's all for today and uh, thank you so much for your attention. So in the next video I'm going to um, correct the rest of the, um, of the exam. So this was just the first part of the exam which has to do with uh, morphological analysis. So see you next time.